step into the latest installment of our rebroadcast series, podcast number 65 titled, Connecting the Dots, Finding Similarities in this Insightful Discussion, featuring Mike from COT on the End Generation Project. Originally aired on April 9, 2024, exclusively on councilofTime.com, see link in description. This episode delves into Bible study highlighting eschatology amidst today's challenges. Join Michael from Council of Time as we explore these peculiar circumstances in this riveting episode number 65. To understand more, visit the Council of Time on their only official website linked in description. We're dedicated to providing truth, hope, and support to those struggling with addiction who simultaneously is seeking God's guidance. Your support drives our mission to guide individuals toward truth, sobriety, and preparedness for what is described in scripture as perilous times. Join our exclusive locals community for each EP family members and have early access to many cool things. Be sure to check out our new merchandise line where we have many cool gifts and hoodies and posters. Thank you for being a vital part of the success of the End Generation Project. Before we finally get into today's rebroadcast podcast, connecting the dots, finding similarities in this insightful discussion, episode 65, let's celebrate the remarkable growth of our channel, reflecting the hunger among believers for truth in these end generation times. It's truly a blessing to see our content reaching audiences worldwide with translations available in over 12 languages. As we journey together, we're committed to keeping this podcast ad-free thanks to your subscriptions. Join our vibrant communities on Locals and Kofi for prayer requests and shout-outs like you will see in this video. All right, now let's dive into today's podcast. Connecting the dots, finding similarities in this insightful discussion. Tune in to the rebroadcast of End Generation Projects podcast number 65 with Mike from COT. Blessings to all. Listen, guys, I'm here momentarily to let you guys know of some planning. I just happen to be busy at work at COT right now, right? Actual work, like real work. And uh, quite a few things are going on. We have to get something back on the road. That was always in the making. Um... I'm going to discuss something with you guys real quick. I cannot be here long. We have a lot to do here at COT. COT has to get set up in coordination with, actually, a global program that the admins have to know about. And it goes live this month. It's very important to a lot of people, a bunch of people. But let me share this first. You guys remember the eclipse, don't you? It was a couple days ago, right? Just in case you guys did not know, call it coincidence, call it what you will. The eclipse marks a boundary, a big boundary, a weather boundary. A boundary that's going to cause a lot of problems, beginning in Texas. We have to deal with that. If you guys look at the boundary of the eclipse, that has turned into an actual weather boundary. And it's not going to be a good boundary. I don't know how you guys are hearing music. The music is uh, not playing. At any rate, I'm sure that uh, 
Not sure why you guys are hearing music. Not sure about that. The weather boundary goes all the way to Maine. And exactly where that line was, right? Where that uh, eclipse shadow, where the moon shadowed the earth. It's an actual boundary. That's going to become... I'm doing an article on that to explain that uh, uh, a little better. A reminder, a constant reminder. See, guys, I'm a Christian, right? I'm a believer in Christ. I believe that God created everything that we see out there. I believe that the eclipse was set at the beginning, right? And it was always coming. So it would really behoove us to pay attention to all these things. In case you guys missed it, last time this happened, a series of events unfolded that were incredibly uh, relevant. They were also a barrier. Right? That was a barrier to 2023. Same thing happened 2024. It's about to happen. Uh, and then, of course, one before that. This weather barrier is going to be quite dangerous. Also, the people changed. That barrier also marks a spot of social behaviors that is unmistakable. Right? There are quite a few things that every single time there's an eclipse in the world, it marks a barrier, a big barrier. Right? Uh, well, folks, we have, and, and again, I'm a believer, right? And so most people, scientists and so forth, they need proof before they do anything. I do not. I believe in the word of God. I really do trust what the Lord gives me. And I will act on things he gives me, right? I just won't talk about those things he gives me. I will act on those things. Right now, preparations for what nobody is uh, expecting is, is quite important. It's very important. It's important for you guys, for your families. It's going to be important when the time comes. And that time is coming quickly. There are several things, several things that uh, heavy preparations are in the makings for. I have an understanding it's very difficult in this world to respond to anything that uh, you don't really know yourselves. And unless the Lord has given you that directly, you can't. You can't really do anything. You, you, you can't react on something and put anything at risk that the Lord has not given you uh, some absolute warning about. Some of us have that warning. Some of us. Not many, but some do. And so we tend to act on that. Again, I'm a believer, and I believe that the gospel is, the Bible is incredibly important. Right? I do believe it. From beginning to end, it's kind of like, um, have you you guys have heard of the Book of Enoch, right? You guys have heard of that. Well, I'll explain this to you, too. Something about the Book of Enoch. A lot of people have the same arguments about the Book of Enoch. And it is, it's just very unfortunate. The Book of Enoch was well known all throughout the Middle East until the Council of Laodicea. That's when it was taken out. The Council of Laodicea, there were some confirmations and decisions that took place in the Council of Laodicea that were science and government based, unfortunately. And they wanted the Book of Enoch out not because of any theology issues. Uh, for example, a lot of theologists, here's what they believe. Uh, here's some of the arguments. And if you guys have... Uh, any major theological arguments regarding the book of Enoch, right? Jot them down. Make them known. Make them known. Here's why I want you to make them known. It's because some of the arguments like this big one, they'll say in the Bible, we have one adversary, Satan, right? A lot of theologists have said that uh, in the book of Enoch, there is no consistent, there's, 
all sin was ascribed to us, Azel, right? And we know in the Bible that Satan is responsible for sin. They have an argument saying that the book of Enoch is different. All sin was ascribed to us, Azel. That's taken totally out of context. In the context of reading the book of Enoch, all the sin pertaining to that world, pertaining to the fall of humanity, and what Azazel led, that was ascribed to Azazel, not the sin of the world. Because the book of Enoch talks about Satan, the major adversary that caused Azazel to do what he did, to cause Simyaza to do what he did, right? So it's almost like they support the decision of the Council of Laodicea to keep that book out. Because the book of Enoch is not used in any authoritative capacity. It tells of a story, a very important one, one that is relevant today, one that you're under the, you're under the heel of today. It's almost like somebody struck a bargain. By the way, in the Council of Laodicea, that's also when the killings began. That's also when government and those who would wield religion were very cruel. It's also when they did not act on the words of Christ out of kindness. But they began to kill people who would dare, who would dare seek a relationship with God by themselves. See, a lot of people don't know that. They don't know that. In other words, they wanted to rule the faith of the world. And they took books out that would cause a person to be independent. In fact, in those times, the priests set the policy. And if you thought differently from the priests, you were killed. God expressly forbid anybody for killing anybody else because they did not believe. So they tried to revert the great, the, the era of grace and mercy. We don't take people out and stone them anymore. They try to bring that back. They tried to bring the laws back. That's what they tried to do. The old law, right, circumventing Christ so they could be Christ in the earth. And a lot of people don't know that. Many of those theologians today bridge the gap between the world, science, and religion. They don't necessarily operate by faith but they tried to prove all elements of faith. Listen, if somebody proves all elements of faith, or it's not faith anymore, how can anybody be pleasing unto the most high? To walk by faith is important. It's like a crucible. When you're not shown proof for something, and you have to operate based upon the truth of your heart, that is, that is very important. Very important, right? When I first looked at the book of Enoch, it was not strange. And how can a person, it's hard to explain to you guys, right? You'd have to be there. But they say that the book of Enoch was recently discovered. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. The book of Enoch has been around for a long, long time. It never disappeared among several cultures. The problem was they were threatening people if they would ever recite anything out of the book of Enoch. They were going to be killed. And people were killed. It was awful. Those were dark times. Priests were going around cursing people's uh, graves, trying to rule people in death as well as life. No one could have a personal relationship with Christ. You had to have a relationship with the priest. And then the priest would manage your relationship with Christ. Anyway, the book of Enoch tells about fallen angels. It tells about the prophecies of what God had given Enoch, Methuselah, and Moses, and, and Noah, I'm sorry, and Noah. And in those dreams that the world was having at the time, he gives a great prophecy of the entire Bible. Not one piece of it has faltered. I find that to be amazing. Not one element in the dreams that were given to Noah has faltered. In the book of Enoch, it foretells of Moses and what Moses would do. It foretells of the coming of Christ and what man would do. It has elements of Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, all of them were in there. 
And do you know that the Bible refers to the book of Enoch several times? It was a common book. Genesis 6 refers to the book of Enoch. Do you know that? It's the same thing. Same thing in Genesis 6 is found in the book of Enoch. Why? Because it comes from the same source. The translators, whoever translated the book of Enoch after, after um, uh, Charles, they were the ones who started to tamper with the book of Enoch. That's why I don't mess with any other copies. The last and only trusted copy I'll go with is the Charles translation. And that was that was the latest one that was translated that can be trusted. What it foretells of the fallen, you know when the Bible when it says, don't you know you're going to judge the angels? It tells you why in the book of Enoch. The same angels who gave knowledge to mankind about war, about metallurgy, all these different things. You may ask yourself, why is that bad? Well, the same reason you wouldn't give an AR-15 to a nine-year-old. That nine-year-old does not have the mental capacity, the conviction to handle an AR-15. He's not going to use it for hunting. He'll end up using it for self-defense, revenge, to act on threats that don't exist. He'll end up being a murderer. If you give a weapon to somebody prematurely, right? Or a device to somebody prematurely that can kill somebody else, they're going to end up using it as a weapon. And what has the world done? They spend most, most of your labors go into building weapons. The smartest people on the earth are utilized to build weapons to kill other people, not tools to vindicate or to free people from these social entanglements, right? Because most mental diseases come from high rates, stress, environmental conditions. People are so stubborn. They just have to continue to murder, kill, and oppress. When you judge the angels, you're going to judge those who had their hand in changing society. Because you live under the conditions they created so long ago, the reason we have what we have, all this sin in the earth, all the weapons, the structure of cities and how people operate, they gave that to man prematurely. They did that. And when man got a hold of that prematurely, it corrupted mankind. Man was not mature enough. He did not have the age the conviction to utilize that knowledge for good. And it really is like giving, you give a child arsenic. Right? Now, anybody who does not know about arsenic, they'll say, why would anybody give a child arsenic? That's right, because a child has no idea. But you can use arsenic to save many lives. That it, in fact, is a staple. And some of the most some, some of the best inventions on this earth. But if you don't know about that, you're going to use it cruelly for self-defense. And then ultimately, it's going to turn from self-defense to paranoia, and you'll end up murdering people. You'll be empowered the wrong way. See, man is empowered when a, when a person has power to crush another person. That's the only time they seem to feel like they're truly empowered. Strange, isn't it? That comes from being immature. Also, when the fallen angels were here, a lot of, a lot of uh, people say, right? They have a problem because God said he bound those fallen angels to the time of judgment. Yet evil is still on the earth again. The book of Enoch speaks of the fallen angels and what they did. God bound them, not Satan. Satan did not corrupt, directly corrupt humanity. <clears throat> Satan is used to tempt humanity. Satan has no power over humans. The fallen angels, they acted on their lusts. They abandoned their first estate. They did that. Hmm? So anyway, 
it tells you of what's happening right now. The same greed that happens right now, the same lust for power. All those things came in the time of the fallen angels. They taught women how to wear makeup, how to seduce people, how to put on jewelry, right? How to be very seductive. This, when you look at the modern day world right now, you go back to Egypt, you start looking at all that stuff they did. You know, now you know why. I don't buy the, some of the, the dates and the ages that mankind is, gets locked into is foolishness. Right, like they continue to say the Sumerian language is the oldest language on earth. No, it isn't. There are two other languages older than that. They just won't share that with people. Do you see what happens when you start to perpetuate a lie to try and prove a theory right? Now they have people chasing things. Some of these things don't exist. The premise of which people are living their lives is false. Yesterday we talked about this. Your life is being a process that people have forgotten about. And if you don't remember that life is a process, you're going to try and make it something that you desire to live in. You're going to be upset for your whole life. Here at COT, we're going to be reading the book of Enoch so that people can have a grasp, a deep understanding of the processes. Do we need the book of Enoch? No, we don't need that. We need Christ. Christ can disclose all knowledge to you outside of, if no books existed, the Lord can still, he can still ingrain within us the entirety of the word missing nothing. Missing nothing. But I'm telling you right now, the ways of those fallen are in the earth and operational, and they have been. People can't see them because they're born in the middle of these kingdoms, which are extremely dark. The giants, when they could no longer satisfy their lusts of meat, right? They turn to the animals. Then they turn to mankind. Do you know that? This age of man eating meat came with a change in biology. Noah was a very important figure. Everybody seems to forget that. They do. Man has slipped so much. See, it's the same reason why Christ, Christ must come back. We can't fix this ourselves. It's too deeply ingrained. Too many lies have been told. Too many cultures are now living their lives by a complete lie. Although, by way of the Holy Spirit, many are breaking away. As the world goes deeper into its scientific journey, its esoteric beliefs, the Lord is really bringing people out of the world. Somebody asked me, they said, well, what if all the rumors are true about, you know, what the scientists, you know, are studying about this and that. And I said, well, so be it. Truth is good. Truth is good, but I do not worship truth. I'll say that one more time. Truth is good, but I do not worship man's truth. Do you know what most people are doing today? Whatever they call truth, man begins to worship that truth. I hope you can see that. They worship science itself, as though science is the vindicator of mankind. They have forgotten about the living God. They have forgotten about the principles of the living God. They're not taught anymore. And what they end up worshiping, right, are the elements of God's creation. And they have forgotten about God himself, his principles, and everything else. They've been doing that since, since I was born, since you were born running around like rebellious children or children with no father is how they've been running around. Look at what they're doing right now. They think they're doing right by the various systems in the earth. Let me share with you something. Jesus reiterated to us, there is nothing good save the father. You remember when they said, oh, rabbi, good rabbi. No, don't call me good. The father is good only. Hmm. Also, 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 they said that the, the, the fallen angels, right, 
the theologians have a problem with this. They said, well, the fallen angels, they repented. That was one of their arguments. And, uh, you know, every time I hear that, the wind comes out of me. They did not repent. They asked Enoch to petition the Most High that they could be excused enough so their children could live as people and have the inheritance as human beings, which is eternal life. They did what they did for their children so their children could inherit eternal life. They wanted to, you know what, it's just like this, the fallen angels did not lustfully get attracted to women. They saw that a woman was a useful tool. Listen to me carefully. These fallen angels could take the form of both male, female, animals, bugs, or anything else they wanted to take the form of. What they wanted was children. After they had the children, they killed the women. They killed the women after they had the children, right? They wanted the children. They wanted to create what God had created in the earth, which is you. They wanted to create it outside of what God sanctioned. And so abominations were born on the earth. What God did, he did with great love. And the Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Right? What the fallen angels did, go read the Sumerian tablets and you'll find all out, you, you'll find out about the fallen angels. So Sumerian tales essentially tell you the story of the fallen angels. It essentially does. But they're warping the word of God at warp speed. They're confusing the context of all these documents. And they're refusing to, to yield to any truth that a human being is naturally born with. Do you hear me? Human beings are born with a natural truth. You guys are not animals. You're of a much higher level than every animal, every insect, every life form on the earth. Haven't you figured that out yet? Everything on this earth knows its function according to the earth. It need not go to a store. It does not need some sort of government nor council to survive. Animals are happy without human beings. But then God made you. After he made this earth, the animals and everything in it, and he made this for you, he put you right in the middle of it. That you would manage it. That you would be caretakers of it. You're the only one that does not fit. You're the one that needs a coat. Shoes. You're the one that walks upright and nothing else does. You're the one with a heart that can have compassion upon the animals. Or an animal would do something naturally, right? See a river run right down the middle of a valley. And you began to see how the animals live. And you saw that somehow that river in its direction distresses certain groups of animals. You have the right to redirect that river. The more you understand the life here on this earth, you were given authority to have dominion over these processes in the earth. You were born with the word of God in you. You were born different than all of God's creation. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. That lets you know that you are an external element to this world. Your body is of the elements of this world so that you can live in it. You're not of this world, you're of your father. So naturally, you're full of your father's ways, your father's word. That's why I said yesterday, through this process of life, it doesn't matter who you are. Every time you go deeper into darkness, what do you end up saying? I want nothing to do with this. Why is it in every single case, when humanity goes off the rails and they start doing dark things, 
many of the real human beings, they, they end up doing the exact same thing. They'll say, I don't want this stuff anymore. I don't want the wrong stuff in my life. The liar hates to lie. The thief hates to steal. The adulteress hates the adultery. You have an adulteress in an adulterous situation. You know what they end up doing? They say, how do we make this right? That's what happens. How do we make this right? Isn't that what happens? Them the liar hate the lies that he tells. If we were honest, if we would not deny our own process, if we would stop living in high-mindedness and realize that this life here on this earth is a process for us, so many people would be helped. To know that there's a natural order God sent in motion for human beings that is different for everything else. That we're being raised in truth, exposed to darkness and light. We always end up craving the light. Those who end up craving the darkness were never of the human race. As we discussed yesterday, it is forgotten knowledge. In so doing, listen, man has made up his own system, kingdoms, processes, and everything else. What they have on the earth now is, is, is so far outside of what the Lord has. It is strange and it will always be. Many of you see the world as something odd and strange. In fact, in order for you to like something in the world, you have to be lured into it. Isn't that the truth? You're not naturally drawn to it. They mark it for a reason. They have to sell you on every idea. God doesn't sell you on anything. The Lord simply discloses what already exists within you. He does not mark it a thing. You were born with these ideas of compassion and love and forgiveness. You had scripture in you from birth. But the world is not like that. They have to advertise and market. They have to program and affirm things in your life over and over and over again. Because the moment they don't do that is the moment you turn away from it. They create desires within you. They do things within you so that you will buy what they're doing in the world. And every time you get down on your knees and pray, something happens a lot of people don't like. You know what happens? The world becomes. What man has built in this world starts becoming strange. The closer and the deeper you get in the Word of God, the stranger these systems of man become, which is why. In order for you to go headlong into what man built, these kingdoms and systems, even in politics, you have to move away from the word of God, don't you? You and your hearts know you have to push away the word of God. When you go into the world, you already know this. Many people will not admit it, but they already know this too. You, that you have to push away from the word of God, its principles and everything else. And if you become totally compromised, you know what you end up doing? You end up re-explaining the Word of God so that you can coexist inside of these systems. But then you have to go against Christ. You have to redefine things. You have to take Scripture out of context. That's precisely what they have done in this time. And that comes with great consequences. We're coming to a point now. All who refuse. The offer the Lord has given. They're going to have to live with what they have chosen. And that life will be in utter darkness. See, because those in darkness have a calling upon them even still. They have no idea what it will be like when that calling is cut off. When they're stuck in the darkness they chose. See, right now God has not left anybody in the darkness they chose. He did not. He did not. 
mankind keeps choosing the darkness. And very soon they're going to be, they're going to not receive that calling. They're going to be given over to a reprobate mind. You will see it. You will witness it. And for those who don't understand it, only God will be able to help them. Because it will drive the average person insane. If they don't know about those principles, if they don't know what it is to be given over to a reprobate mind, that God will actually do that. If they don't know what the falling away is, if they don't know it's going to drive them insane. Because they continue to choose flesh and man and greed and everything that goes with it over all things of the living God. They'll soon be given over at the exact same time that the earth will undergo the changes that have been held back all this time. Everything has been held back for the sake of humanity. Everything has. That is clear in the word of God. Everything has been held back for our sakes. So what do you think will happen if man continues to choose the world over the Lord's truth, over compassion, over having a sound mind? What do you think will happen if man continues to shun sound doctrine and they continue to run to fables and worship the creation more than the creator and they worship demons as gods again? What do you think is going to happen? God has already told us that when mankind begins to do this again, he's going to give them over to the desires they so love the most. And when he gives them over to their desires, they're going to become reprobate, believing those things that are in the darkness are the good of their life. They will no longer know Christ. They will not love the Lord, but they will absolutely be against him. And these are the ones found in Revelation who blaspheme God, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in it. Those are the ones. The ones that first walked with him. The ones that were cut off. And that's truly when the dark ones will rise within the earth. Their kingdom is almost finished. Meaning, all those folks, they have used programming, propaganda, marketing, and everything else for. And all those people who said yes. In order to say yes to having power in the world, you've got to agree to be an oppressor of your own kind. All those folks who love the things of this world like racism, right? Like crushing your competition, like not caring about those families that starve. So long as you're okay, the world is okay. Who cares about your neighbor? Those who continue to find a reason to hate someone, they're going to be given over to it. In all those tears, God will gather them together and bundle them together in something called the kingdom of the beast. They will take the mark in view of Christians. A Christian who loves the Lord at that moment when the mark is actually in this world and ready to go, the conviction will be so strong within those who truly belong to the Most High. Nothing in the heavens nor in the earth can cause them to take the mark of the beast. Nothing will. They're not going to do it. They don't need all the alternatives according to the movies that Hollywood has written to fool people in. Nothing is going to end up like Hollywood ever wrote. It's not. Hollywood has never gotten it right. The Lord has already told us it'll be a time like no other. Since this earth was created, 
to that very time, nothing will compare to the time that's coming. And just in case you did not know, you've already gone into the first door of this time. You have entered into the first door of this time. Of the last season up on the face of the earth. You thought it was coming with a big announcement. It did. You know what the announcement was? It was that real spiritual calling within yourselves. You guys remember for the last, at least the last 10 years, the Lord has given you a message directly. You know what that message was? Don't play. Do not play with your salvation. You were the ones who became sincere all of a sudden by yourselves. Nobody influenced that upon you. This was born within you. You sought out those who were sincere about Christ. You did not want to be fooled. You knew they were going too far in this, in this world of religion. You knew that. And you sought out sincere truth. You did that by yourselves. Because in your spirit there was a calling. Do not play with your salvation. It's coming. And it's real. And you moved on your own. Nobody had to prod you to do that. And God opened your eyes a little bit. And the first thing you saw was a bit of hypocrisy existing everywhere. You saw it in so many places you did not know where to turn. You've already gone through the first door. And how many people are trying to silence that message within themselves by immersing themselves in excuse after excuse after excuse? Soon you'll go through the second door, an unmistakable second threshold. Nobody goes back out these doors. This season is unfolding. Just as the Lord said it would. See, the world does not have the calling you have in you. That sincere call to the Most High is not in the world. But there is an element in the world fighting it. As it grows with sincerity within you, so will the fight increase in the world. And that's what you're seeing in politics. And that's what you're seeing among people and social paradigms. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing a darkness rise to fight the voice of God within you. That's what you're seeing. As that calling becomes greater and greater within you, so will the darkness become greater and greater in the world. I hope you know that. Lord called you to function beyond every vice in this world. Above all the darkness that would ever, that would ever confront you in this world. He called you to walk above that. You know what it means? You don't dodge the darkness. You walk on top of the darkness. That's why Christ stands ready to forgive those who repent so that you can grow. You know, without Christ, you cannot grow. Without Christ, you cannot grow in truth. Somebody would have to tell you about the darkness, but you would be forbidden to ever experience it. I hope you know that. When Christ came, the Lord did something different, didn't he? People were born in the darkness. They knew all about it in truth. Or do they say, they said, no, I don't want this darkness, I want Christ. And because he had already come, they could be forgiven those who sincerely repented. Repent means to turn away from and never do again. That's when you have a heart to never do that sin again. It's when you see the darkness and you say, I want no part of this adulterous situation. No, Lord, I'm going to get it right. Nobody has to poke and prod and scare you into doing right. It's when you choose to walk away from evil and darkness, that's repentance. When it's purged from you, that's repentance. 
Repentance is not saying I'm sorry and then going right back to the same vomit. That is not repentance. Repentance is when you walk away from it and you never go back to it. That's repentance. Now you know what it is when the Lord said repent. Repent. Repenting is not saying I'm sorry. And then going right back to the same stuff again. That's not repentance. Repentance is when you see it, you have disgust for it, you walk away from it, and nothing can make you go back to it. That's repentance. Nobody can tempt you to go back to what you repented of. Because you refuse to go back to what you repented of. Nobody can tempt you. Nobody can promote it in your life. It doesn't matter if it exists around you or not. Nobody can make you go back to it. It's like a person who's been freed of drugs. It doesn't matter. They can smell the drugs all day, see the drugs all day. Nobody can make them take any drugs. Nobody. It's the same thing. Once you repent of something, you have seen the truth of it. You can see it everywhere. And you forbid. You forbid yourself. You have no desire for it. And you forbid it to ever come in your life. That's a repentant heart to see the truth of something. That's what repentance is. Once you see the truth of it, okay, everything from our Father is had in truth. Not in some lie, not in some marketing campaign. It is found in truth. Repentance is established in truth. When you see the truth of darkness, that's when you want no part of it. It is a true thing that a Christian, they have a desire for dark things when they do not see the truth of it. And if they don't see the truth of it, then they are what? Deceived already. It is a father who opens your eyes. Once you see the truth of something, you don't care if it kills you or not. You're getting away from it and nothing can make you go back to it. That's a repentant heart. And those who have repented, they walk through the darkness. They walk through the valley of the shadow of death and they fear no evil. Those that know repentance. Those that don't know repentance. Everything draws them on every side. That's the difference. And we begin without repentance. When God teaches us as we are exposed, as we go through this process, we develop a repentant heart. That's how you overcome you overcome through God's process, not through your own wisdom and knowledge and everything else. Certainly not through man's dictates and marketing schemes. You overcome by way of truth. God does everything in truth. And those who repent, what does the word say? Jesus is just to forgive. So once you discover the darkness that's been in your life, once you see it for what it is, once you forbid it for coming back into your life, you are fully exalted of it. You are fully forgiven for it. It is wiped from the record as though it never existed. See, not only do you overcome it, but Christ seals you from it. Those who are written in the book of life are those who repent. Those who live that life of repenting. Nobody repents of everything all in one day. God brings things to your mind. He will train you in a specific part of darkness. Then he opens your eyes to it. And that dark thing, when he opens your eyes to it, and you've been trained to see it for what it is, that's when you have your opportunity to repent. When you have a repentant heart, the Lord does not force this. He just gives you an ability to see the truth of it. When you have that repentant heart, that's when you make that decision. After you repent of one thing, guess what he does? He takes you on a journey to repent of more things. That's what your life is. That's what your life is. Examine your life and see the truth of it. 
Please don't think this life is your paradise. It's a place where you do what you want to do. Life is designed. It's designed that you may have a walk of truth, that you may see all things, the truth of it, and that you may truthfully overcome all things through Christ. And Christ will seal. He will seal. Whatever you repent of, he'll seal it away from you as though it never existed. He truly set you free. Do you see how some people can end up chasing the wrong things of even the Lord? And they have forgotten about the process, the true process. The Lord has been consistently having this specific process upon us from day one, and men have forgotten. And they're trying to turn it into something else, which is a grave error. What the Lord does, he does in truth. Why would he do all this? Because you're real royalty. That's why. This isn't some fictitious journey. And every human being has this in them. And the knowledge is quickly being lost. Your life in this earth is a process. Everything in it is critical. That's why it tempts the Lord thy God when you murmur and complain, because he designed the processes of this life. What he's doing, he's doing perfectly. Yes, it's going to break your flesh, because what God does, he does in truth. You have seen the truth of evil. You have seen the truth of light. What do you choose? Now do you see why the Lord speaks against the double-minded man that would say yes one day and no the other? Now do you see how dangerous being a double-minded man is? Now do you see it? Because your entire life has been this process. And people are trying to make it to be something else, like a some sort of commercial adventure. This is not some commercial adventure. This is for real. The darkness that comes into your life is real. The light offered to you is real. The choices you make have real consequences. As it turns out, life is not what you make it to be. Life is what God designed it to be. And all those who forget the living God will not know about the process. And this process will consume them. And it will be their doom. Because if a person rejects everything about this process, they have truly rejected the ways of the Most High, the one that created them. Mankind is running around the earth right now forgetting they're created, forgetting that every single day that they live there is being sanctioned by the living God. All you people out there who've had a breathing issue, who've had a heart issue, you know it's by grace you can breathe. All of you who have choked to the point of passing out, you know, all of you who have drowned at some point, you know it's by grace, it's by God's love, it's by his mercy, his decree, that you have life. You know that you do not have life on your own. You know how easy it can, it can happen for you to be here one moment and totally lost the next. You know that your suffering can be far worse than it is right now. All of you who complain and don't like your lives, you, your life can be a thousand times worse. And that can happen in a snap of a finger. You know that you're sustained by God's love, his grace. By no other power do you have life than by the power of the living God. Never forget that. See, we forget too quickly how quick life can change. How many ever got carefree in their homes and then they choked? And you couldn't get any air. And it scared you to pieces. Huh? How many, how many knew that? And then in that moment, you were like, oh, Lord, no, not this time. Not yet. But then when it was over, what happened? Listen to me, what happened when it was over? It's like it's instantly forgotten. It's like it never existed. The 
truth that you had a hold of while you were choking, you cannot, you cannot keep a grasp of when it's over. You can't do it. In that sincere moment, when you realize the small truth, it's very difficult to hold on to, isn't it? It's very difficult to hold on to. Only in a time of crisis, in a time of pain and anguish, do you ever step into the real truth? Because the moment you feel the consequence is coming, that's when you find out the real truth. Listen, it's our responsibility to hold on to that truth. God will never force you to hold on to truth. You've got to reach out, grab it, and take it, and protect it, and, and say, hey, this is my truth, I, I got it now. And never forget it, that's your responsibility. Because if you don't grab hold of it, you know and I know it's going to be gone as though it never happened. And it will come back again. How many people have choked more than once? And every single time you choke, you already know what to expect. But when you're not choking, you totally forget about choking altogether as though somehow you're never going to choke again. You see how tricky that lie is? Do you see how tricky that is? How easy it is? To say to yourselves, oh, that'll never happen to me, but it just happened to you. Do you see how easy it is to forget about grace and mercy and what power is truly sustaining you? It's time for humanity to wake up. Remember that process about choking. Remember that process of how hard it is to hold on to something, how easy it is to forget the truth that God reveals to you. It's your responsibility to hold on to it. It is in the Bible you hear of prayers. And in those prayers, what do you hear of? You hear about people forcing themselves to be mindful of how they were delivered. Because the moment you forget how you're delivered, you're going back into bondage again. The Lord desires us to be free. Your royalty. That's what you are. You're going into eternity. You will be flawless. Your father is not raising you in error. But he has a perfect process to raising you. All creation is made for your process. My Lord, can't you see it? Everything is made for your process. You are the objective. But God will not force, so everything is about free will. Everything is. Don't forget those things. Because I'll say it again, this knowledge is largely for God. Even among those who believe, it is largely for God. Remember it. Because if you believe in Jesus of Nazareth, I'll tell you right now, the Lord is not willing to lose you. Do you know that? You are his. And he loves you more than you can comprehend, and he's not willing to lose you. If you believe in Christ, God has sealed that belief within you. He is the only reason you believe. You do not believe on your own. Do you know that? That means your Father in Heaven loves you. And everything He does, He does in truth, and it's very authentic. Remember who He is. That when you approach Him, you do so. Remembering who He is. He is not your neighbor from next door. He's doing a serious, authentic work on all of us. And you, you, you're the reason he created the heavens and the earth this way. You're the reason for his grace and mercy. Do you know that? What he did, he did for you. God desires children, true joint heirs. 
you're being qualified to be his children. Not to be some powerless life form in existence. Certainly not anything that's going to worship the, the moon or the shadow of the moon or the stars or man's twisted, greedy knowledge. You're a royal priesthood. Do you know a royal priesthood is different than a priesthood? A priesthood is a position. A royal priesthood is a finite position. And the royalty base is in the kingdom of the living God. That means over all creation. A priest has a right to exercise the will of the creator you're a royal priesthood you have no idea what you're about to become it's a good thing because at the end of it all you you will have gone through the Lord's process authentically and truthfully. And you will not be like Satan who used his free will to fall away. No. Those who make it this time will actually agree with the living God. And they will forever be family. And that will be the beginning of your life. Remember that. Stay as authentic as possible with the word of God for yourselves. Remember, this is not about forcing anybody to be like you. This is not about forcing anybody to believe anything. This is about bringing out the truth of what's already there. Like the recognition of a family member. If you were to walk out in a park and you saw a bunch of families out there, but then you noticed one or two of your own family members, and then you notice five or six of your own family members, you're going to end up gravitating towards your own family. That's who you're going to end up with. Isn't that funny? You're not going to end up with the strangers. You're going to end up with the familiar things. With your family, through familiar things, you're going to notice one, and then you're going to notice two or three, and then you're going to notice five or six. That's how it happens. The word of God's the same way. You're in this earth and you're starting to notice familiar things bound in the word of God. And you're gravitating towards that. That's what's been happening this whole time. No one forced you to become compliant with the word of God. People tried and that failed. That's why some of you went out in rebellion. Because somebody tried to force you and trick you into being righteous. And you cannot do that. That perverts the word of God. Everything God does is by invitation. It is by free will. It is bound in truth. And the origination of the whole process is by love itself. It's a very authentic work. But the consequences are coming. The separation of the wheat and the tares. The binding of the tares. It's coming. It's coming. The reprobates are going to be seen. That's coming. The falling away is underway. And a new threshold you're about to walk through. All these celestial happenings from the Father see him that way. Man did not do what just happened. Do not worship it. Don't let it move you. But have an understanding that your father set this in motion from the beginning and it holds meaning. Don't let man define that for you. Because your father has already defined it. Remember that. Now, sorry, I did go off the handles, off the in there, folks, but I got to run. I really do have to run. We have a lot to set up. I will not be sleeping tonight, and I'm very thankful for that. I like the energetic moments because I'm a believer, and the storm is coming. 
and the storm is not going to let him. But every single one of God's children we will be victorious. And nobody can do anything about that. God's children will walk through every level. God will have them walk through. Never be afraid of what the Lord is sending. Be authentic in your following of the living God. That's all. That's all. That's why I ask all of you to be yourselves. Be authentic here. It's where it begins. It's my firm belief. The Lord can do a good work in this place. It'll branch out. It's already been branching out in many different places. Nobody's bragging here at COT. Nobody does that, right? So it's branching out. Something is catching. And it's not because of me. It's because of the Most High. Sometimes it comes through me. That's all. But I'm just like you. Folks, and see you guys next time. All these things the Father is doing, they are by design. They're full of meaning. You don't have to assign a made-up meaning to anything. You don't have to do that. Have an understanding that everything God does holds meaning. He will disclose it to you. But listen to me. Try to do this. I know the world has taught you one thing, but try to do this. Never try to know something from the living God so that you can stand out of, among men. Try to get out of that mindset. That's what the world instills in people, right? Because sometimes people go to the living God so they can stand out among men, so they can be the first to tell everybody else, so everybody can look at them. If you can get that out of your heart and out of your mind, if you can get that out of the beginning of your motivations, right? Then everything can be pure in you again. And the Lord will not withhold things from you. He does not want to give you something that will corrupt you, that will cause you to fall away. He doesn't want to do that. He also does not want to withhold information from you that you need. He wants you to be able to see everything you need to see. But if we take what he gives us, and we attempt, and we attempt to have a higher platform in view of everybody else who put ourselves first above everybody else with what he gives us, listen to me, then we're abusing something extremely pure. And whoever does that is going to be cut off. That's when you have a reliance on other people. The well is not cut off here in this place. It's not. Take advantage of it. For your family's sake. Do it for love's sake. But please, try not to do it to be a known person. Many of you are going to be known anyway. I hope you know that. They will not remember me. I'm here for the message. Not so they remember me. This is about what comes through me from time to time. Because what comes through me does not belong to me. Do you understand that? It belong to me. If it's real, it's from the living God. It does not belong to me. I'm just used at that moment as a vessel. That's all. If it be true and work out and align, align with the word of God perfectly, it is from the living God. This isn't set up so anybody remembers me. This is for real. For a real work. That's what it's for. Folks, God bless you and keep you. I'm going to see you guys next time. I will. I will. Keep you guys in prayer. Be ready. We're soon to cross through another threshold, another door. Be ready. And above all things, Put your focus in the Most High. He's keeping you through Christ. He's keeping you. You can smile at that. You can. God bless and keep all of you. I'm going to see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless.